Hello everybody, Hank Klein here from HK Digital Reviews and I'm here today with a review of the new Uboa project, The Origin of My Depression. Now, I had never heard Uboa up to this point when I heard this album, um, but I don't know. It's not necessarily that I didn't hear this album before because this album has been out for quite some time now actually. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was released in February. And I first heard about this album, though, actually in April. And I kind of passed on this project because at the time, I really was not in the mood to like hear something that's overly sad or anything like that. And I have a feeling with this album, especially with the title of it being The Origin of My Depression... I knew this was going to be something I'd have to pay a lot more attention to when I listen to it. Not just something I just listen to and kind of think, oh, this track is good, this is that, this is that, you know, anything like that. This was something that I was going to have to listen more intently to to kind of understand what's going on with this album. So, a couple months have passed since I've heard of it, and it just finally came down to a time where I'm like, you know, the curiosity is getting to me. I gotta check this thing out. I have to see what the hubbub is about this album. Because there are some pretty good reviews for this album that you can find well, basically anywhere. So, I was like, alright. Time to try this out. See what we got here. You know, how exa how exactly is this thing gonna affect my emotions? Like, Because you know it's gonna be something that's gonna be dark with what's happening here. I mean, again... The Origin of My Depression. And then the album cover is somebody that's in the hospital bed. So, yeah. It's going to be dark. And, yeah. After listening to this, it is is a dark and pretty emotional piece of music. No question about that. Now, for genre styles, this is kind of a nice mixture of different stuff. Um, you have noise. Um, harsh noise. We also have dark ambient music is also found in this thing. Um, we even have a little like uh, industrial vibe to this as well. Industrial rock. You can even say sludge if you want. If you want to go there too, that's also a possibility. So it's an interesting combination of stuff to help create this feeling that she's trying to portray in her in her music, which she does honestly incredibly well with this project. Um, it's only a seven track project, it's uh, about 40 minutes in length, it's about the average length of an album today anyways, just done with fewer tracks, so obviously there's going to be some longer tracks on here, which is definitely the case, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, I guess really just time to start getting into the album itself. We have the very first track, which is called Detransitioning, which is oddly beautiful, Right off the bat, the piano that is on this song is not necessarily like on a beat. It's just kind of doing its own thing while she sings her part of the song, which sounds great actually. Her vocals are actually pretty nice throughout. Um, and then she has lyrics about feeling like that she's not good enough, that there's nobody listening to her or anything like that. And she just doesn't want to be hurt by anybody anymore. And she only has nine total lines of lyrics on this track, which end about halfway through the song. But after she's done singing these lyrics, the, all of a sudden these beautiful vocal melodies just come out of nowhere and absolutely just take over the track and just make the song so hauntingly beautiful that it just honestly gave me goosebumps when I was hearing it. I was just like, holy shit. This is something this is something else right here, folks. And while that was going on, the piano's still there. You hear more kind of like noise popping up. And then it gets to a point where it starts sounding pretty crazy. Like you start hearing noise, you start hearing like glitchiness starting to come through while it's trying like metal in with the um softer, more delicate and beautiful melodies are going on in the track and it's starting to mold together into something that's like sporadic um chaotic and I guess in a way almost evil because and I guess it really is 
a great way of showing how depression really feels. You know, you're feeling, you know, somber and stuff one minute. And then the next minute, you could just all of a sudden start just feeling like chaotic. You start feeling like you're just, like just starting to lose it. Basically, pretty much is how I kind of interpreted how this song ended, to be honest with you. And it's a fantastic opening track to an album that's going to mean a lot throughout. Now, the next track is the title track to this album, The Origin of My Depression, which um, is a pretty great track all in all. It's more of a dark ambient uh, track. It's really basically all it is. Nothing crazy in terms of like industrial or anything happens necessarily. Um, and lyrically on this album, she, on that album, on this track, she kind of goes off listing off things that have kept her depressed, but are not the reason why she is depressed. And there is an awful lot in here, whether it be, co- whether it be because of, um, being awkward in social events, whether it's just because of her gender dysphoria. Um, in case you didn't know already, I didn't mention this before, but, uh, Yuboa is a trans, uh, gender, uh, female. So, that also adds a lot to her problems. Uh, she's talking about her problems with poverty is not the reason why. She also says that people being ignore, ignoring her throughout her life is not the reason for her depression per se. And it's just, and then she goes through a big list of stuff such as like not eating, you know, having, you know, possible eating disorders and stuff like that. Um, and it's all softly delivered, and. There's a little bit of a problem with this track, though. The production is so loud on it and just so overbearing, you know, the ambient part of it, that it actually gets a little hard to hear her vocals, which make make it hard to understand the meaning of the song a little bit without having to look at the lyric booklet, essentially, or checking out her band camp to find the lyrics to this thing to understand exactly what's happening on this track lyrically. But then once you kind of read into it, it starts to make makes make all sense. Now, after she's done listing all this stuff off and talking about other things in her life, it is a little break in her vocal part. And then she comes in absolutely manically screaming on the top of her lungs. And I really mean on the top of her lungs. She is not holding back when she finally tells you what the origin of the depression is. It turns out it is a certain person. And it is a certain person. And she's just laying out pure anger at this point. Just going absolutely bananas on the microphone. While this dark ambient sound is still going on. Nothing's changed at this point with that. It's still pretty dark ambient. Nothing's really going off the wall crazy, you know. That's kind of how she's going right now. But it honestly does add a lot of emotion to the track. Because again... It just shows how like it is building up in the song, how she's just like listing all these things that make her the way she is right now and upset and well, depressed. And then it just all boils down to this one person who just started it all for her and then she just absolutely loses her freaking mind on it. Which I love. I think it shows true emotion. I think it definitely um does great, honestly. Um but after that, we have the track Lay Down and Rot. Um, it starts off extremely noisy. At this point, the loudest and noisiest yet to, on the album. Um, that kind of slows down a little bit and kind of just calms down. Uh, but the song still sounds extremely dark. The ambient noises still sound very haunting, uh, gloomy. Um, sound like, you know, something's about to come and get you, honestly. And this time she doesn't hold back at all. She's just screaming again all throughout this track, she's absolutely just at the point now where she's just losing her mind, and she just has to completely just let everything out, and there's not much, again, for lyrics, there's not much to it, it's like one, like three, seven lines, and actually one of the lines is redacted, so who really knows what she says in that line, but it's again just about her, about love essentially, and being without being without it is completely just destroying her at the moment, and she's absolutely just belting it out again as loud as loud as possible on the mic, just going kind of nuts on it. But again, it's just the emotion that it makes you feel when she's doing this over this very dark sounding material. It's 
it's very impacting, honestly. It really is. Now, I'm not saying it's, like, the most impacting thing on here, necessarily. I might even get on your nerves a little bit hearing this. You might not take this song as seriously as the rest of the album, necessarily. But I do still believe that just helps out with getting the song, or this album, excuse me, to really hit these different levels of emotion. And then it all comes back towards the end with these very harsh sounding noises again. The harsh noise comes back. Um, very disorienting, but at the same time, works very well with the album we have at play here. Um, then we have Appalachian Joy, which is a much more beautiful sounding song aesthetically. Um, she definitely, She definitely has calmed down at this point. She's no longer screaming at the top of her lungs. She's kind of back to the state of being mellow, which, you know, if you've ever been depressed before, you would kind of feel like you've had those emotion swings before, where you'll be sad, then you'll be angry as hell, and then you'll be sad again, stuff like that. So I think she's starting to follow this this pattern on this album to show that really these mix of emotions that, that comes with depression are really, you know, starting to stack up a little bit and add more to it. And... You know, this is when she starts feeling she's um, unwanted in life. Um, basically saying with lyrics such as, I've got cancer for you, I am porn, unwatched. Essentially kind of saying like, she's she has a lot of pleasure to give, but no one's there to like let her do so. She can't help with people, but no way's letting her do so. You know, this person that she loved, she had so much affection for but she can't ever show them that because, you know, they don't want her back or something, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, also, track uh, lyrics like Left on a Drive, Untouched, I'm a Plastic Bag, I'll Never, I'll Never Degrade, stuff like that. Again, just kind of a plastic bag floating in the wind, feeling she's useless. And there is a recording to end this track off. Now, this song's beautiful so far. Nothing too crazy is happening. But to end this track off is like this recording. And I don't really know exactly what the lyrics are supposed to mean on here. I honestly didn't really want to look more into it. But I noticed as this was happening, the music in the background was building up. Was massively building up. Building up. The noise was coming. You can hear the industrial side starting to kick in as well. Everything was starting to rise up until the very end of the track. And then once the end of that track hits... We get hit with the next track, Please Don't Leave Me, which is by far the harshest, noisiest, most angriest song I think I've heard this year. Like, it is actually phenomenal how destructive this track just sounds. Right off the bat, the very first second, the 10,000 ton wall of noise that just crushes your freaking spine... Just knocks you all over the damn place. Absolutely insane how loud this is. How in your face this part of the song is. And then she once again is back to her ways of just screaming her brains out. saying Just saying, I didn't do anything yet you punished me like this. And it even gets to a point where the vocals are actually almost in a way demonic to be honest with you. It's actually pretty sinister sounding. With how it goes. And then it has a nice calm spot. In between that harsh noise. And then you have this calm spot. And all of a sudden this extremely hard hitting guitar. Just pummels you to the ground. Like this is sludge. Almost like sludge metal at it's like hardest right here. Honestly. And it's just again. She's just screaming on the mic. Just You can just feel the pain and the anger she's trying to show here. With this track, it is just unsettling to the core. It's just, um, when I first heard this track, I was just blown away at this point. I just could not believe, like, we're hitting all these emotional points. And then we just hit this humongously high point of anger towards the second half of this album. And it's only a minute and 51 second long track. It is not a long track at all. It is by far the shortest track on this album. But God, it hits like a freight train. And it's easily the most memorable moment, I think, on this album 
just because of how ridiculously impactful it is, especially with what's been going on so far in this album, and it's just, ugh, it's just incredible. I absolutely love it. I think that ad- that adds so much character and so much spice to this album to help with what it's trying to accomplish. That I don't know, fantastic, just absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love that this is in here. It's just great. Um, let's see. And then after this, obviously we're got we had to have a cool down moment because we just had by far the hardest hitting uh, instrumentation and production yet on this album. We have to go back. We have to go back to Slay More Calm and Collective, which we end up doing with the next track, which is An Angel of Great and Terrible Light, which is a much longer track, about eight and a half minutes long, but musically it's probably the most normal honestly on this album um you start off with this um like this kick drum beat going on and then this acoustic guitar comes in it sounds fantastic actually and works so well just so well with the rest of what's going on you know it's just a nice addition to it as this kick drum keeps going and it keeps going and then you get like these I guess there would be sense that would create this sound. I don't know. It's a nice melody that over, that overtops this. And your singing is back to a nice, prettier self. She's definitely um, calmed herself down a little bit since then. Uh, towards the middle of the song and further, you actually get that sludge slash industrial rock vibe back into it with the guitars that are loud. And they do hit hard still. But they don't ever take away from the kind of beautiful instrumentation that was going on beforehand in fact it mixes really well and again it goes on for about eight and a half minutes or so but it's a very nice progressive build-up it's not something that's like harsh it's not like what we just experienced on the last track with please don't leave me it's it's just a nice build-up and a nice song structure and, and song style it's a very nice progression I guess lyrically, this one didn't hit me as hard, honestly. But it's still like, it's, she's still not giving us a break when it comes to just these lyrics of, you know, just in a way like torment. She still is showing that she's really hurt. She's showing that there's more to her than what people see. And she's just trying to express that more. So. Again, this is just a great addition to help give the feelings that this album gives off. But I don't think any other song on here hits hard emotionally as the final track on this album, which is Misspent Youth. Um, This is also the longest track on here, about ten and a half minutes in length. And I gotta tell you, this album, or this song definitely was the emotional end that this album needed to... I guess really come full circle in a sense because this is when she just finally says like she just she feels like her entire life is wasted because she said she basically said it took her 26 years to figure out who she was that she was a transsexual female but this entire time the lyrics talk about how she's just been being tormented by other people assaulted abused and Psycho and mentally, and just even herself, just psychologically messed up because she just couldn't really figure out who she was. And it's honestly just haunting to kind of hear this, and it's just very saddening. And talking about how basically her entire life is just hell, and nothing, it doesn't really matter at all what people say. And like towards the end of this track, I think for some reason why. This these last few lines get to me. I don't know why that is, but it's some of my favorite lyrics I've heard this year. And the final ones that go, I wish I was I wish I always were me. Because hell is fine if I'm a woman there too, and hell is my truth. So essentially saying that her life is just hell no matter what. And it is partly due because she is a transgender woman. And I I'll never understand fully what it's like to have those kind of feelings. Because I, I, I do know who I am. You know, I know I'm a male. You know, stuff like that. But So I'll never truly understand exactly what goes through people's heads when they have gender dysphoria. And have a hard time figuring what they are. But I can just imagine how 
destructive to the brain that could be when that first starts happening. I, I, I could imagine it'd be pretty, pretty terrifying. And this track just really kind of shows that all together that she just, she just is hating the fact that she had to wait this long to figure this out. But at the same time, she's okay with it now. And because that's just her truth. And she's happy that she's figured out the way she is. And musically, it's interesting because this track, it's like she's, she's singing over top of what sounds like just somebody doing their everyday life things. Like, honestly, it sounds like somebody's in the kitchen, like, grabbing stuff, pouring stuff in the bowl or stuff like that at the very beginning. And actually, throughout the entire track, we have this. Uh, the instrumentation for this track is beautiful. It's lush. It's pleasant. Um... I mean, honestly, there's not much more to say about it because, well, there actually is more to say about it. I, I can't say that. But, again, for the most part, it's a very beautiful, soft ending to this album that's been all over the place when it came to being harsh or beautiful and stuff like that. And, again, lyrically, like I said, it's a great, it does a great job finishing this album off. Um, it definitely creates the emotional um, feel that you'd expect to. With an album like this. Um, and I love how towards the end. The same piano style that was used. On the very first track. Comes into the. Uh, to the. Um, wow. Lost my words there. It comes back into the fold. Okay. And it sounds just as lush and, and odd. As it did in the first track. But it just kind of shows that. It's cycling over again. This is a never-ending cycle for her. She constantly feels this way. That's why I got from it. I got that the ending to this album is just kind of like leading back to the beginning again. Forget this cycle of depression that's just taking over her and basically making life a living hell, to say, for her. And I can't help but kind of feel bad because it's just like, it's something that nobody really should ever have to go through, but yet so many people have. And this album, I think, truly shows just how it feels to be depressed, how the changing emotions of anger and sadness and just, it's just, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say when it comes to that department, to be honest with you. And I don't know. In the show, in the end, how it seems to all loop back to itself. I, I think it's fantastic. I think that Uboa here did a fantastic job of showcasing how depression feels. And she does a good job showcasing why she is depressed. De uh, depressed? Depressed. And why she also still has this depression. And why she's going through essentially a living hell for most of her, for her entire life. And there's not many other albums out there that I can say that have done that. I can't really think of an album that's depressing necessarily or or anything along those lines that really showcase this type of mental issue as much. I think this does the best at showing it and both lyrically, both vocally, and both um, instrumentally. Yeah, so, I don't know. Overall... I think this project was amazing. Um, there are problems with production, though. I do feel like... I say it? Well, I do feel like her point can't get across as well as she wants. Because sometimes the, the ambient tones, actually, surprisingly, it's the ambient tones that really take over from the vocals sometimes. Not so much the harshest parts of the album. It really is just these darker ambient sounds that just take over sometimes too much that prevent the listener from actually listening to the lyrics and I do think that could be a detriment to some people to listen to and I think it's something that I think was an oversight and maybe should have been looked back into before releasing this project but besides that this thing like I said it's incredible it really is it's emotional it's an it's one hell of an experience that um You'd have to be in a certain mood to listen to. I mean, I wouldn't listen to this like in the car. Like, hey, yo, dude, check out this new album I got. 
um, that person like, what in the fuck is wrong with you if you did that? But in all seriousness, no. If you're looking for an experience and a half uh, to listen to by yourself, this is the album to do so. Um, so, yeah, that's basically all I got to say. Um, you boa, the origin of my depression. I am feeling a 9.5 out of 10 on this record. So, got nothing else to say. So, that's the end of the review. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. I guess hit that notification bell if you want. I guess that does something. I don't know. Notifies you. All that good stuff. Um, what would you think about this album? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Is it too sad or did you feel nothing from it? Talk about whatever you want about this album in the comments. Just keep it clean. All that good stuff. Anyways, once again, thank you all so much for watching. And please, have a nice day.